let's go through and draw more Lewis structures. In this case, we're going to be looking at one of the exceptions to the octet rule, which is the largest exceptions, and that is those structures that have more than an octet because the D electrons get involved. So we're going to go through our steps, and the first step, of course, is to find the sum of the valence electrons of all the atoms in the polyatomic ion or molecule. Now, we don't have a charge, so you don't have to worry about adding or subtracting electrons. Now, xenon is in group 8A, so that would be 8 valence electrons. Fluorine is in group 7A, and there are 4 fluorine atoms here, so that would be 4 times 7, for a total of 36 valence electrons. Remember, this is the number of electrons that we have to use. We can't add electrons or subtract electrons, can't create or destroy them, so we're going to have to stay with 36. Now, we would keep track of that by subtracting the electrons that we use. And if you're following along with our steps, the order pretty much is bonding electrons is next, then we would subtract the electrons we used on the peripheral atoms, and then we'd subtract the electrons that we used on the central atom. So it goes in that order. Bonding electrons, peripheral electrons, central electrons. Bonding, peripheral, central. So if you remember that order, that puts us in a pretty good shape. All right, so we have 36 electrons to work with. Let's go on to the next step. The next step is that we would need to determine the central atom and the peripheral atom. So xenon would be the central atom, fluorine would be the peripheral atoms, and remember it's the least, usually the least electronegative element that's first. Now we put the central atom, connect it to the peripheral atoms with a single bond. We we'll always go with the single bond. That is two electrons. So in this case we've used eight electrons in bonds. So we would subtract out eight electrons. That gives us 28 electrons left. So step three is the peripheral atoms. We must complete the octets on the peripheral atoms. Remember, hydrogen only needs two. So in this case, each fluorine has two bonding electrons, so we need to put six more around each fluorine for a total of eight electrons around each fluorine. So how many dots did we just put them in? Remember, we're putting them in pairs. So how many dots did we use? Well, as you can see, that we used 24 of these electrons for the peripheral atoms. So we would subtract out 24. That gives us four electrons left over. And where do those four electrons left over go? They go on the central atom in pairs. Remember, we still put them in pairs. But where are we going to put them? Because we already have four bonds around xenon. We'll put those pairs of electrons on the corners. So there we go. We put four advanced electrons around xenon so how many electrons now are around xenon, though? Mm, so let's count them. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Xenon, in this case, has 12 electrons. That's definitely more than 8. Let's take a look at another structure. In this structure, we have xenon and two fluorine atoms. So again, the first thing that we need to do is sum up the valence electrons. So in this case, we would have 22 valence electrons. Then we would just subtract out the electrons as we use them. So remember, it goes in this order. Bonding, peripheral, central. So here we have xenon as the central atom and fluorine again are the peripheral atoms. We would connect them together with single bonds each bond we're using two electrons, so that's a total of four electrons in the bond, so we would subtract out four electrons. That gives us 18 electrons to work with. Next. Then we fill the octets of the outer peripheral atoms, so each fluorine has two electrons, so we need six more to give us a total of eight around each fluorine atom. So how many dots have we used? Well, we've used 12. So 18 minus 12 gives us six electrons left over. And of course, leftover electrons go on the central atom. So we would put, yes, six electrons in pairs around xenon. And that gives us how many around xenon now? Well, let's count. Two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around xenon. So we've seen two structures that have more than an octet, but this is interesting. One time xenon has 12 electrons, 
Another time, xenon has 10. Well, how are we going to know how many electrons are around the central atom if it's more than 8? Well, if you follow the steps carefully, if you'll see, if we followed all our steps, we would end up with the correct number of valence electrons that need to go on the central atom. So one time we had four that we needed to put on the central atom. Another time we had six. So if you follow all the steps carefully, you'll know.